Last class, what we talked about was this idea that matter uh, in the universe is conserved and that through a chemical reaction, we can rearrange atoms into new molecules, but we can't destroy or create atoms. Um, each atom has a specific amount of mass. So that means that the mass of, of a chemical reaction beforehand and afterwards must be the same. After today, the things that you guys should be able to answer is firstly, what are the different parts of a chemical equation? Um, last classes, uh, daily quiz scores were a little hit or miss. So we are we're going to do a really quick review of just kind of some of the vernacular, some of the vocabulary of this unit so that you guys are uh, all really straight and narrow on that. Um, then what we're going to do is we're going to talk about whether or not a, an, an equation is balanced or not. And then after that, we can talk about the, if we, if it is not balanced, how do we go about balancing it? And how does that relate to the law of conservation of mass? So first and foremost, uh, on this left side of the chemical equation, we have the part that's called the reactants. Right? These are the parts that are going to react with each other. In this case, we've got hydrogen gas and oxygen gas to, to what we call diatomic molecules. So these are the reactants. Sometimes they're single elements. The gross majority of the time, they're going to be molecules or compounds. These are the things that are going to exist prior to the chemical reaction. After the chemical reaction occurs, we're not going to have those things anymore. Right? Those four um, hydrogen atoms and those two oxygen atoms are going to rearrange themselves into something entirely new with new chemical properties, right? Like I said before, hydrogen is a gas, oxygen is a gas. Afterwards, we're gonna have something new, water, right? In this case, it's going to be gaseous water as well, but it's going to have entirely new properties. You can't combust water, for example. So our products are going to be a new substance after those chemicals have been rearranged. But I would like you to note specifically that, the, that in two water molecules, we still have four hydrogen. In two water molecules, we still have two oxygen. The number and type of atoms in a chemical reaction does not change, right? We can't create or, or destroy atoms. We can't transform them from one type of element to another type of element, right? Uh, alchemists tried for hundreds of years and couldn't do it. It takes extraordinarily sophisticated equipment to allow us to do that. Um, our, our last member just joined today. So we've got a full house. Bully, bully, bully for us. Okay. So that's something important to note. Let's just do some really quick review, right? Um, obviously, you're not going to work with a partner. Uh, perhaps he didn't. <laughs> didn't change that this year from last year. Um, you know, you're you're not allowed to be anywhere near a partner. Please don't approach a partner. You know, stay six feet apart from each other at all times. Blah blah blah. You guys get you guys know. Um, in this case, what we have is a chemical reaction between carbon dioxide and water. Right? They're reformed into a complex carbohydrate that we call glucose, right, or sugar. So we're taking carbon dioxide and water, and we're making sugar out of it. We're also making oxygen out of it. This is perhaps the most uh, important reaction on the planet, right? So just be mindful that we're working with some really uh, significant chemical reactions here. Um, what are the products for this chemical reaction? Anybody want to go out on a limb? Six carbon dioxides and six uh, water molecules. Close, except that I did this on purpose, or I, you know, I noticed that he did this. Um, list the products first. So what you listed were the reactants: these six carbon dioxide whoop, over here, and these six water are the reactants. What are the products? Somebody other than Alexia. I think she answered every question last class too. I know that you guys are there. C6, H12O6. And Glucose. 6O2. And 6O2, 
right? So the sugar and the oxygen are the products and our, so these guys over here are our products. These guys over here are reactants, right? What does this thing that is now a square because apparently it did not convert into Google Slides, um, what does this arrow represent? That represents the transformation or the chemical reaction itself, right? That is the yield sign. This stuff reacts yielding or making or producing these guys over here, okay? So just as kind of like um, a becomes sign. How many atoms of oxygen are in the product side? So we're looking at this side over here. We wanna count individual oxygen atoms. A lot of people um, did not do very well on this portion of the daily quiz last time. So really take your time. Look at them individually, right? In this product, right? That's one molecule. In that one molecule, how many oxygen do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, right? That's this number down here. So over here we have six. We have six O2 molecules. Each O2 has two oxygen, right? So here we have six times two for a total of 12 oxygen over here. That means we must have 18 oxygen on the product side. How many oxygen must we have on the reactant side? 18. Beautiful. Beautiful, right? We have 18 on the product side. We have 18 on the reactant side. We must, we must, we must. That's the law of conservation of mass, right? Did you do any complicated mathematics? Did you get there, Alexia? Did you count them? Yes. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> you shouldn't have, you could have, but you didn't have to, right? We should have known simply by the fact that we had 18 in our product, we must have 18 on our reactant side. All right, let's try hydrogen. How many atoms of hydrogen are on the reactant side? This is, I think, a little bit easier because in our carbon dioxide, we have none. So any hydrogens that we have in this reaction come from our water. Each water, as we know, has two hydrogens. So we have six water, six times two. We're gonna have 12 hydrogens. Oops. Somebody other than Alexia, somebody other than Cole, how many hydrogens do we have in our product side if we have 12 in our reactant side? Can mute myself too and then it'll be even more awkward. Here we go. What was the question? If we have 12 hydrogens on the reactant side, how many hydrogens must we have on the product side? Um, it would be the same. 12. It would be the same. Thank you, guys. Well done. <laughs> right, I think that's Asha. Thank you for breaking that incredibly awkward. And then Gabby came in for the with the save, and that you guys answered at the same time. What a lovely time we all had doing that. Thank you very much, guys. That made me happy. All right. Um, now that I'm in a, a more joyous mood, uh, why don't we take a look? And, and anybody have a guess for what this reaction might be? What takes in carbon dioxide and water? and produces oxygen as a, as a byproduct, but more importantly, sugar, the basis of all life on earth? I'll give you guys a hint. Photosynthesis. It's photosynthesis, right? What we're looking at here is photosynthesis. This is the reaction is photosynthesis. Well done, guys. All right. Um, let's relate this to the law of conservation of mass. I think that you guys uh, are probably already kind of doing this mentally, but, but we might as well just get it straight out there. Um, I have in this uh, image represented both uh, the chemical equation right here. Oops. 
the chemical equation right here, and also this molecular model of this reaction. What you'll notice, just like last time, is the number and type of atoms are going to stay the same. We got one carbon over here. We got one carbon over here. We got one, two, three, four oxygen over here. We got one, two, three, four oxygen over here. We have one, two, three, four hydrogen over here. And guess we have four hydrogen over here. Those atoms must be the same on both sides, as both Gabby and Asha told me um, so brilliantly last question, right? Um, matter cannot be created or destroyed, not through a chemical reaction. Atoms can only be rearranged. So in order to, to make that true for these equations, what we'll end up having to do is balance them using the coefficient, right? I must, in the reaction of methane burning with oxygen, generate carbon dioxide and water. That's a fact of the universe. That's what happens, right? We as chemists have to dictate what's actually going on there on an atomic scale, right? Why couldn't we just use one oxygen here? that one oxygen would be split, right? And attached to my carbon dioxides. And I would not have enough oxygen to generate any water. And I know from making this happen that I'm going to generate water when I burn methane, right? I can condense that water. I can look at that water. I know that it is pure water, right? So I can generate this and I must generate this. So in order to keep this true, we need to change the coefficients and balance this equation. Um, a lot of students try to change the subscripts, but as I think I've made this joke before, right? Uh, a chemist walks into the bar and says, I'll have a glass of H2O, please. Right? The bartender has a good chuckle, right? And gives him a glass of H2O. Uh, the guy next to him says, I'll have a glass of H2O too, right? He gives him the glass, clear, you know, he drinks it down and the guy dies. Why? H2O2, hydrogen peroxide, deadly. There's your chemistry joke, all right? A nice gruesome one for today. Happy Monday. All right, I think you guys get it. So we cannot change the subscript. You have to change the coefficient. If you change the subscript, you're changing the molecule altogether, which is gonna change all kinds of crazy stuff about our reaction. We can only change the coefficient. That's the, the number of molecules that we have there. Let's really quickly go through this list and see if each one of these are balanced or if they are unbalanced. In order to do that, I think that the fastest way, the easiest way to do that is by generating something that I like to call a, an atom inventory. Right? How many atoms of each type are on each side? So here we have our reactant side. Here we have our product side. In our reactants, we have a carbon, a hydrogen, and an oxygen. Carbon, hydrogen, and an oxygen. I don't even have to look at my product side. I know immediately because of the law of conservation of matter, that those two things must be the same, right? So we've got a choo-choo here. In this case, we have one carbon, four hydrogen, two oxygen. And then on my product side, I've got one carbon, looks like two oxygen. Oh, and another two oxygen from over here. So that's four oxygen and four hydrogen. Are these balanced? No, these are not balanced. So the first one, not balanced. The second one, sodium, bromine, calcium, fluorine. Here's my, pro my reactant side, here's my product side. I've got one, I've got one, I've got one, I've got two, all right. My products, I've got one. I've got two. I've got one. I've got, wait a second, this doesn't match. This is not balanced. So far, so good. Continuing on. Hey, we watched this reaction occur, right? The oxidation, hopefully no one tried to burn steel wool um, over the weekend, but if you did, safety first, safety glasses. Um, it is a beautiful reaction. Uh, here we have iron, it's being oxidized, we're creating rust. Um, we have iron, we've got oxygen, and that's it. Reactant and product side are, uh, we have four iron on our reactant side. We have two times two, that's four iron on our product side. We have three times two, that's six oxygen here. 
That's two times three. That's six oct. Oh my gosh. We have our first balanced. Right? So we're at no, no, yes. No, no, yes. Let's try this next one. Product. Ooh, excuse me. Reactant. Product. Tin. Oxygen. Hydrogen. We have one. We have two. We have four. We have one. We have two, right? Two times one. We have four. Two times two. Oh my gosh, yeah. two in a row. Sorry, did I mess that up? Or do you just want to say it? I'm kind of stealing all the thunder here. So if you guys wanted to shout yes or no, that's great. I don't know who said that. Last one. So we're at no, no, yes, yes. <gasps> the rubber match. Right? Yay is going to take it. Or it's going to come down to this last one. Here we've got our reactants. Over here we've got our products. We have potassium. We have magnesium. We have bromine. One. Two. Two. One. One. <clears throat> You guys think that you could manage figuring out whether or not these equations are balanced or not? Give me the party doodle if you're feeling this. Questions and concerns for those people that do not have party doodles up right now. Is there some part of this that you're hanging up on? Okay, well, we're going to continue. Uh, please feel free to ask questions uh, as they come to you. You don't got to wait for me to ask you to ask questions. Nope, I do not want to edit this. I want to play it. Where do I want to play it from? Somewhere down here. This one. All right, so when we have an equation that is not balanced, how do we go about actually balancing it out? First thing you got to do is take your, your your atomic inventory, right? In this case, I've got two silver, one oxygen on the left. I've got one silver, two oxygen on the right. That is obviously not going to be balanced. So it answers my step two already, right? My step two is, is it balanced? In this case, it is no, right? How are we going to go about balancing it? Well, what we got to do is we have to look at that, um, atomic inventory, and we've got to balance the coefficients where those uh, atoms exist, right? So in this case, we've got um, two silver that's attached to one oxygen. It's going to decompose into one silver and two oxygen. That doesn't make a lot of sense, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to balance our silver. That means we're going to change the coefficient on the product side from one to two, just like that. Our silvers are now balanced. We're going to move on to our oxygen. Our oxygens are not balanced. So what are we going to do? We're going to change the coefficient here to two to make that balanced. Great. Everything's balanced. Yet. No, it is not. Right now we have four silvers on the left. We've got two silvers on the right. What do we have to do to balance it? We've got to rebalance our silvers on the right. There we go. Hunky dory. Everybody's happy. It's an excellent example. Right? So just because you balanced something already does not mean that changing the equation later on does not change that balance. You've got to make sure. I love balancing equations. I think they're very much like puzzles, right? Be patient with them. Sometimes you got to go back and forward. It's like a little blacksmith puzzle. I think that they're really a little, you know, a fun little mental exercise. Okay. Again, we take the inventory of the elements uh, on each side. We then find out it is balanced. In this case, it is not balanced, right? We have one carbon. Here, one carbon, four hydrogen. Here we have one hydrogen, right? And over here we have five chlorine, right? Hydrochloric acid. Um, all right, so, and you know, carbon tetrachloride. So what are we gonna do? Well, we make our list. 
not equal, not equal. So we're going to change our hydrogens. If we change our hydrogens on the right-hand side, that means we're going to have to change the coefficient in front of that hydrochloric acid to a 4. Now, when we change the hydrochloric acid to a 4, that means now we have 8 total chlorines, right? That's 4 from here, and now 4 from here. For those of you guys that are, that are not mathematicians. Right, <clears throat> so we have eight total chlorines. Now we are imbalanced in terms of our chlorines. We weren't balanced in the first place, so we didn't do ourselves too much trouble. Um, this, in this case, we put eight as our number of atoms that we need, but we have to make sure that we look at the coefficient. We're not going to just write eight here because that would give us 16. No, instead, what we have to do is we need eight. I'm gonna say four, four times two equals eight. Check. Okay. We're going to skip that last one. I think you guys get it. How are we feeling about this? Questions, concerns about this? Okay. Then let's take, we'll say, uh, actually, you know what I want to do? Let, let me share my screen. I've got a couple of things to go over before I let you guys loose on this um, worksheet. The first one is the FET program. So you guys can go to Google Classroom. On Google Classroom, you will find the assignment for today. It's called Unit 5, Day 2, FET Lab or something like that. Hmm. Oh, it didn't post up. Well, let me post that up real quick. Oh, the lecture didn't post up either. Hmm. All right, so go to Unit 5, Day 2, FET Lab. It just got posted up there. And the lecture just got posted up there too. <clears throat> All right. When you are there, you can go to the FET program, and it does work. I just checked it on uh, my iPad. So um, when you're here, right, what you can see is that we can add individual molecules of each of these types, but we cannot change the subscript. Again, neither can you. Right? When balancing these equations, you cannot change that subscript. Um, I would encourage you guys to straight off the bat, put up this little uh, scaly doodad. Right? So we need uh, X number of nitrogens. We need X number of hydrogens. Maybe the graph is easier for you. I'm pretty sure you just posted the lecture twice. Well, I I, thank you. <laughs> all right, I'll go back and check that out. Thank you, Alexia. Um, all right, so what you guys have to do is make sure that these are balanced. All right, if I need two nitrogens, I need another one of these whole molecules. Now I need six hydrogens. That means I need to up my hydrogens on this side. Ah, oh, and it gives me a little smiley face. Instant gratification. Nothing quite like it. Um, before I let you guys entirely loose on this worksheet, um, there is... Just one little part of the worksheet that I would like to go over with you makes it a significant amount easier. Uh, kind of a little trick. Save you guys a bunch of time. So there are some. Uh, particles that, that don't get rearranged in these reactions. So if we were to look at this last page, right? if you'll notice on the left-hand side, we have this, this whole particle right here. Right? That particle doesn't change on either side. Right? We have an NO3, we've got an NO3. That means that we can balance it like it's one thing. Right? It's in parentheses, so we need two of this whole thing. So I could very easily write that too there. 
Right. It's not always going to be in parentheses, such as this one down here. Right here, this is what's called a sulfate. Here's a sulfate. Right. Here's a carbonate. You guys obviously don't need to know the names, but it, you can also balance them by breaking them into individual atoms. It will just take you an exhaustively long time to do that. So just keep an eye out for those particles that are kind of grouped together in such a way that that group does not change on either side. Cool. I hope that, that that saved you a good amount of time. Why don't we reconvene at 11.10? 11 11.10, we'll come back together. We'll go over some of these questions. I'll answer any questions you guys have. You'll have the daily quiz. We'll call it a day, okay? See you guys at 11.10.